everyone, it's Angela Hackman here, your host of In the Kitchen on STL TV, where we give you a glimpse inside the always impressive St. Louis food scene. I am delighted and very hungry because I have a, a local gem here with me. I have got chef owner of Pino Soul Food, Mr. Peppy Kem. Peppy, how's it going? How's everybody? Everybody good? What are we cooking up today in the kitchen? So today we're gonna do our traditional gnocchi. So Oof. just a very simple uh, dish. We come from the poorest region in Italy and they survived on potatoes and Sicilian, right? I think we're probably related in some way, shape, or form. Very before. close, mm -hmm. Calabria region, southernmost tip before you go over the Straits of Messina to Sicily. So it's a very close culture between the two regions. So. Awesome. Yes. Well, let's get going. How do we start? It smells so good. Well, I'm <laughs> going to go ahead and throw some gnocchi together real quick. And uh, so we'll start with a double zero flour, which is a light flour. So it's a very simple recipe. It's just one egg to one cup of flour. Ooh, okay. And if people are feeling bold and very confident, you can make this at home. I personally would simply call Pino, but by yeah. all means, check out the ingredients on our screen, add it to your next shopping list, take a picture, tag us. So we got an so egg. So we got okay. an egg, we got the flour, we got the potato. Put the potato through a grater mm -hmm. or cheese grater and just kind of, we're gonna mix it up. So Peppy, let's talk a bit about the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Pino is located in the heart of, I call it Restaurant Row in Clayton, mm -hmm. right off of Wydown mm -hmm. Boulevard. Why did you choose that specific location? Well, to tell you the truth, I've been running up through Clayton since I was young. I grew up in Dogtown. So about seven years ago, we uh, took a former pizza place and we turned it into more of a restaurant. Trattoria, if you will, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of worked for us. So I'm just going to pull this together a little bit. We don't do machine-made pastas. We do handmade pastas at our restaurant. So all these are kind of built around our regional cooking um, in Calabria. It's the southernmost tip, very poor region. They call it Cucina Porva or the poor kitchen. And, um, you know, it's most scary. of the stuff I do, it's really like the Creole of Italy down in that area. So we do a lot of slow braising. We do, we do a lot of land and sea combinations. Mm -hmm. So this little dough ball. Wow, you really to, worked that into something. Ready to be worked into some ropes which I'm gonna show, show me you the ropes. Once, uh, yes, show right. me the ropes. And I'm not gonna lie, you've seen me and my family, we are so. huge fans of Pinot. Uh, my two-year-old craves the meatballs, mm -hmm. which are probably bigger than her head, and that's cool. But honestly, you and your staff, you make everyone feel so special when we're there. You personally make the rounds to all the tables and you're genuine about it. Well, our, we've been doing restaurants for a long time in St. Louis since the 50s. We've had a, Rest, uh, pizza place in Dogtown through the 60s. I've had some places in through the 80s in Dogtown. And really just, my wife has Michael's Restaurant, which is a institution in St. Louis. They've been 45 years and they're, they're Greek. And Brave that's reviews their... about the wings, I've heard. So, so talk to me about a few other menu items. I personally am a huge fan of your spaghetti and meatballs, the Pinot Italian loaf. You guys put the olive oil in the bread. We do. We do a couple different breads. We do our sourdough, and then we do our white Sicilian, and we just add, after we cut it, we put the oil and the cheese, and everybody mm -hmm. thinks there's some you magic that we put it in there while we're baking it, but oh, it's magical, once it right? comes out, we put it in there. And I believe that the sourdough is just a really, really nice sourdough that mm -hmm. we do too. Is that so, the sourdough what you use for the pizza also? Uh, sourdough, it, we use our white dough for a couple different things. Okay. We use it for the bread. And then we also use it for pastas that we do for starters mm. on the sourdough. So the white we do for our garlic cheese bread, so and then we also use it for our pizza. So it's kind of multi-use 
on Love things. It. And your pizzas are incredible. You've got the thinner crust, you've got the thicker Sicilian style. People go nuts mm -hmm. over the Giuseppe pizza. Yes. Who would have thought? Pine nuts, fennel, sausage is a golden recipe. And did that, in a way, that name specifically spin off the Pinot? Name? Well, Restaurant? on the, you know, a lot of our products we call the Creole of Italy down there. So you got a lot of North African influence, Middle East, Greece, of course. A lot of our agrodolces or sweet and savories mm -hmm. come from the North Africa. So that pizza right there has a reflection of all the stuff we do the homemade ricotta, the peppers we roast, the, the pine nut and raisin that we put on there, our handmade sausage, fennel sausage. It's a very spicy region down south too. Hence so, why there's a little bit of chili. In yeah, the there's this. some chili going into uh, yeah. into the gnocchi. I'm gonna give you a real quick kind of almost too pretty breakdown meat. of how we roll this right Show here. Show me how you roll. You know, and we're just gonna take it. Sometimes it's easier without the flour. Okay. I just want to put some flour on my hand. Got it. And we're gonna roll it yeah, out. Yeah, who needs a roller? I can't wait to make this. Is this a, a recipe that has been passed down from your family? Is oh, this yeah. something you developed? Oh, no, yeah. these are recipes, like the gnocchi is just a really regional dish. Everyone down there you'll find doing gnocchis. Potatoes a big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, we just have, I'm using a fork. Okay. You can use a knife, of course. Perfect little pillows here. So. Anyway, I just take these little balls and we roll them oh, back wow. on. So they're just a little. Can I try one? Sure. They're so pretty. Oh my goodness gracious. And so Peppa, you are obviously, like you mentioned, you are not new to the restaurant world. Did you start working at Ragazzi's when you were barely a teenager? Ragazzi's was the first stop. My mom was very good friends with Josie Ozzy. So okay. about 13, we started there, but Prior to that, we had a pizza place in Dogtown called Marietta's. Um, so that was through the 60s, Marietta's, and okay. through the 70s and 80s. And then we just kind of uh, did our own thing. My mom and dad were like, mm, they have four kids, they weren't going to have a restaurant. Right. So it's... we just skipped into me, and I just kind of had picked up all my great uncles had restaurants all over the country um, so and there's such beautiful tributes throughout the restaurant you've got yeah. photographs I mean you've, yes. you've got uh, menu items named after relatives it, Kim Tucci mm -hmm. was a relative of oh, yours yeah. late Kim Tucci wonderful wonderful treasure oh yeah how did I do am I hired it's beautiful, <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> trying you know sometimes they come yeah I mean you never trust like a perfect pasta because then you know it's not handmade so there's a lot of time involved in that. Peppy, can I ask, does yes. your menu change often when you get seasonal ingredients? Well, we do seasonal stuff. I mean, I source very clean. All my proteins are very local sourced. Uh, most of the vegetables throughout the summer are brought in. In the winter, we have to source a little bit outside of St. Louis, although we try to stay as local as possible Definitely. with root vegetables and other things. We are going to pause right here, my friend. When we come back, we are going to finish up this gnocchi. But we are going to take a quick peek at our very own Angela Sharp. She took a field trip to the Orange Couch Coffee House. Say that three times fast. Right. Out there in Eureka and had a whole bunch of fun. So let's see what happened at the coffee shop. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Why do you not get me? I do. This is what it feels like for kids with learning and attention issues. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Well, hey there, I'm Angela Sharp with STL TV, and we're here at the Orange Couch Coffee House in Eureka, Missouri. I've heard so much about this place. We are gonna meet up with the owner, Maggie Schammer, and we are gonna find out and maybe taste some of these awesome drinks I've seen so much about. I see that, how you doing? I'm thinking we got a Friends theme going on. We're gonna find out more. Let's go inside.
All right, I found the owner of the Orange Couch Coffee House, Maggie Schomber. Thank you so much for having us out here today. Thank you so much for coming. Now, I, I, I figured it out. It's, it's a Friends theme. Are you a huge Friends fan? No, just a little bit. I'm kidding. <laughs> I am a huge fan, and um, actually I had this question asked so many times that by now the word is out and people are actually coming to me and saying, is this true? I actually heard that you learn English by watching Friends. Yes, it is true. Wait. Not just that, uh, but um, when I came to US, which was over 18 years ago, I thought I knew English. Turns out I didn't know English. So I had to really catch up quickly. Uh, I lived with wonderful American family and they were helping me by first laughing at me uh, a lot. Right. I would say stuff, but I said, that's okay. You laugh, but then you teach me how to say it right. So I did learn a lot from them. And, uh, and then it was friends. So, I mean, it's such an awesome show. No cell phones, no iPhones, right. no, it's just people talking. And it's the language that you can really understand and laugh a lot, so why not? It was like a you know great show to watch and bonus, I was learning English. And you were learning English, that's yes. great. Where are you originally from? I'm originally from Poland. Oh, okay, very yeah. nice. Okay, yeah. and so Friends helped teach you a little English, so then I guess I should ask you, who's your favorite Friends character? I should not say this, but oh well, it's Chandler. Is it Chandler? Yeah, yeah. Chandler's the funny one. Yeah. He really yeah. is. I just, I just love Chandler. Uh, but uh, I am a lot like Monica. Oh, are you? Yes. So we have to put everything back. Oh, yes. And then my husband actually tells me that sometimes I'm a little bit like Phoebe because I will be very much of squirrel. So what <laughs> right. Were you saying? Yeah. Exactly. So there you Perfect. go. Perfect. So it's a phonica. I love this. All right. So what made you want to open up a coffee house? I always. As much as I remember, you know, kids are dreaming about, uh, oh, I'm going to be a teacher, I'm going to do right. this. And I kind of felt like I wanted to have a little coffee shop, a little, like, really, a little, just this cute coffee shop where I could just be every day, talk to people, read my books. Well, it's not like that at all. No, no there, there's none no, of that downtime there's nothing you thought. like that, yes. <laughs> but, uh, but it was never the right time because things were happening, you know? Right. When we moved in here to Eureka, I thought, oh my gosh, this, this place, this town is so lovely. This is gonna be it. But again, things got in the way. And then years later, opportunity came uh, and I was like, okay. So honey, to my husband, if uh, this, this, what I'm working on will not work out, this seemed to be a good place for a coffee shop. Yeah. When I was opening the coffee house, the idea was, you know, it's going to be about friends. No, not at all. But I wanted to have a nice name that kind of, yeah. I like it. And since I love friends, that's why the Orange Couch Coffee House. Uh, and there were a few things here, just very, very few things related to friends. The couch was here, right. definitely. But once people started coming and seeing what's going on, the word spread, oh, it's a friends themed coffee shop, which is not, it's friends inspired. <laughs> and. Um, so when I noticed how much fun people had with this and how joy it brought, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do more. So I just started adding more and more. And you know what they say, when you spend time in a place, a lot of the time, you wanna surround yourself with things that make you happy. Yeah, of course. Friends is my happy place. So that's how I started. Because of my happy place, it may, it makes a lot of people happy. Just being in here for a few minutes, I actually kind of looked around and noticed little things like Joey's penguin you've got over there by yes, the counter. Yes. So you've got a lot of like little different friends touches throughout so, the shop. Exactly, and um, and I'm having fun with this. So this is just, we have a, a loyalty program over here. When normally you go to the store, uh, the any shop store, and when they have a loyalty program, rewards program, right. you're earning stars, right? So here you are earning Hagsies. Oh, I love it. Hagsie is Hagsie because what Joey does with the penguin, he hugs him and it's a Hagsie. So when you're earning a Hagsie, it's like a little hug from us. For yes. you guys, I love that so much. So what is kind of the drink that you guys are like known for? Like that's your drink. So our drink is the orange couch mocha and that's the drink that we do sell the most. I'm guessing partially because of the name. <laughs> well, of course, absolutely. Yeah. I did see you have a how you doing hot chocolate, which also has a friend's tie, which is great. So we have a drink over there that is called 
seven seven cold brew. Oh yes, seven. I remember yes, that very seven, well. Seven that good. That's right? perfect. Okay, okay. So I did it on purpose. Or we over there have um, wapa. Cappuccino, yes. no, espresso. It's an espresso because you know Chandler. Every time when he had to uh, break up with Johnny's, he was drinking this espresso like a crazy, crazy person. Crazy. But he doesn't know it's whoosh as opposed to wapa, <laughs> and that's why we have a wapa espresso. I, I know, love and things this. Like that. That's so cute. So if you really do know friends, you can find all these little hints throughout, not just the giant orange couch, which I think everybody knows. Yeah, so with the rewards program, when customers call, how many hacks do I have to earn in order to get my free regular size drink? Again, I had to think a lot because it has to make sense for the business, but it has to be the number that is from friends. So we'll check your knowledge of friends. The number is 11. Yes. The 11 towels. Yes, good. Yes, yes that's the categories of Monica. I told you, you know, I watch a lot of friends. Exactly, so, <laughs> so there you go. So little things that will bring, you know, small pieces of friends and those who watch and love friends, to them it's gonna be like so much joy that they know yes. the others will just, oh, I like it, but you know, when you have this little red lobster right next to a uh, uh, um, Ross, Ross and Rachel, and Rachel yeah. You know why? Yes. Others may not know what the heck is with the red lobster, right? right? But, but, but things these are like lobster. That. Yes, yes exactly. perfect. Oh yes. my goodness, that's so cute. Now, do you guys also sell treats here too? Yes. So during the week, we have muffins. Uh huh. On Saturday and Sunday, every Saturday and Sunday, we partner with Donut Palace in Ellisville. Oh, nice. And we get donuts that are delivered here. I'm assuming these drinks are going to be phenomenal. Are you going to make one for me today? Uh, of course. You know, I hope that you'll let the ladies know which one is your favorite. Yeah. All right, this is Sam. She's one of the baristas here, and you were gonna make the drink for me, right? Yes, an orange couch mocha frozen. All right, so I'm you ready. start off with your cold brew, which we make in house, okay. and so I'm just gonna add that to the blender, and then your choice of milk, which we're using two percent here now. Then I'm gonna go add our white chocolate sauce. Okay, now that looks delicious. And next, the powder, which is what makes it frozen. Two of these red scoops. And then lastly, I'm going to add ice. Ice, okay. And then we throw it in the blender. All right. And then wait. Then I'll add caramel drizzle. Ooh, I'm already excited about that. And then if you would like whip, I'll add whip. Um, I always want whipped cream. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Awesome, awesome. I think I should go over to the orange couch to test this. Are you ready? Let's go. This is so good. You definitely need to come out to the orange couch coffee house. It's right there up of Legends Parkway in Eureka, Missouri. If you want to follow them, they're theorangecouchcoffeehouse.com and the Orange Couch Coffee House on Facebook so you can keep up with everything that's going on. This is so much fun, but I'm gonna throw it back to Angela. This has been Angela Sharp with In the Kitchen on the Road. Angela, you need to make your way out here sometime soon. It's so much fun. Okay, that looked like way too much fun. We'll just call that the one with the orange mocha. All right, okay, we are gonna get back to our gnocchi here that Chef Pepe from Pino Italian Soul Food and I are creating. Okay, let's keep a moving here. We're just gonna make a simple little sauce. It's a traditional sauce. I do pretty traditional, easy things with technique done right. So 
I'm going to start out just making the tomato sauce. And I have two different little things that I'm going to make. First, I'm going to make just a straight tomato basil. And then I'm going to throw a little bit of mixed meat in there. So it can go two different ways. We'll split it on the on the on the plate. So pulling out all the stops today. So I'm gonna start with some butter and it's a little warm. So I'm just gonna cool it down with a little olive oil. So while you're getting the sauce concoction going, mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about this gorgeous new revamp that Pino has recently gone through. Well, we added some seats. Um, we always thought that we'd have some growth. And it's been a gem for us. Uh, I thought my way into a restaurant over there. I was going into Clayton many years when I was younger, and I knew that I'd have a restaurant over there. So there I am, and you know, it's we just do some simple food, approachable food over there. Sometimes Clayton gets a little high end for just people. A little. You know, but you and wouldn't that's know it. When you walk through your doors, it is like your family. You're going to get treated like family. The food, you are consistent, which yes. is key. That's kind of why we roll. So I just mixed up a little bit of mm. parsley, garlic, and some Calabrian chilies. We'll get the oils from that. Oh in my there. goodness. So <laughs> it's just Careful like a little, a little oil and the peppers, they're gonna release their oils. So in addition to simply dining into the restaurant, talk to me a bit about the catering options. Well, we do everything French, we do Italian, we do Greek, my wife's a Greek, American, so. And this is both on premise and off, right? Oh, yeah. You're saying I could bring Absolutely. 25 friends and Pino could make the food for us? Yes, I mean, we seat, we seat about 70 right now, mm -hmm. so we have plenty of room. Perfect. So and I'm got, just oh. putting in a prepared tomato sauce with the butter, the oil, the peppers, the garlic. So it's just a very simple kind of tomato sauce that we do the gnocchi with. And what I'll do is I'll just heat a few gnocchis. Okay. With the gnocchi, we want them to be really hot so they puff back up. How exactly do you know those are ready? Well, the gnocchi, I mean, they have the ability to kind of be overdone a little bit because they're mm -hmm. puffing out. So some Italian pastas you don't want overcooked and yeah. some you don't mind being a little bit overcooked because these are gonna be wanting to be like soft like pillows. We're gonna give it a second in the heat over there. I'm gonna dump the gnocchi in. So, Pebby, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, yes. kind of a new thing you got going on. In addition to being a newly revamped, beautiful, swanky, not uh -huh. stuffy restaurant, uh, you've got catering. Talk to me about the Chef Classic Series. So many great chefs that have paved the way for us. A lot of my friends, I'm, I'm almost there. I'm uh, being 57, uh, it's kind of a younger guy's game. and working my way into some other things food-wise and mm -hmm. some writing for a book. We do have a couple places that we're working on. One's in Lafayette Square. It's gonna be called Dear Rose, D-E-A-R-R-O-S-E. -E. It's a little neighborhood lounge in Lafayette. Oh my gosh, this is a new concept of yours that's going to be yes. happening? And Holy then cow. next year we have a <clears throat> place that we're doing at the district and it'll be a little bit liquid forward. We're working with Michael Steinberg on a sure. place that you'd find in London or Tokyo, more ultra lounge, and then the food will be more dessert forward. I love that you don't ever get comfortable. You try new things. You said you're writing yeah. a book. You've got these different, very different concepts from what you grew up doing. Well, I, you know, for me, my art is bang, banging, banging pots. Mm -hmm. I bang pots, it gets rid of my resentment. <laughs> I write stories, it gets rid of my craziness. Or sometimes I incorporate that craziness in my, my book, but. What are you gonna do? We're doing <laughs> memoirs of a psycho chef. Are you and serious? And it's a reality thriller more towards TV content. Um, I did a film about 20 years ago on 35 millimeter that got picked up and, you know, I have always been in the arts. I used to sing and write and I just feel like that that is part of my release, you know. 
That so. is so beautiful, and it's true. Food and art and storytelling, yes. it all goes together. It does. It's humans being humans in this wild world of ours, and That's how do we it. connect, and how do you get that creative outlet? You found it. And I'm gonna turn this down because it's pretty much dead, done and it's puffed up. Like, I could add some meat to some of this, and what we do is pork, chicken, and beef as a ragu. Oh. So I'm gonna make some of it as a ragu on one side of the plate. A lot of your reviews online are all about the ragu, just FYI. We do so many ragus from rabbit to goat to pork, chicken, you know, everything where we come from has its place in the pot. I Sorry. like that, very Sorry, well Sorry animals, but <laughs> that's what happens. When you're poor, you eat pretty much whatever yeah, you want. it is survival. So. So, so what, what's on the horizon? Can you share anything else? You did tease out a few different restaurant concepts, but is there maybe a new menu item coming to Pino or something that you're really excited about? Well, the winter really changes into our wheelhouse because mm -hmm. that's where we really, you know, we do, like I said, a lot of goat, a lot of rabbit, um, a lot of heartier food because we're coming from an area up in the mountains about an hour away from the ocean. So I think we just, get, you know, we do, Many, many gelatos, many sorbets, lots of little easy ice creams. Um, so, yeah, we have a great staff, man. I'm so grateful. I mean, to, to come out of uh, COVID mm -hmm. and to be where we're at right now, it's an amazing feat for us. Um, we worked real, real, real hard just to be community oriented. Definitely. And everybody uh, wanted to kind of work, so. And All right. you really did it. Yours was one of the restaurants, you know, in the beginning of COVID when people said, buy buy gift cards to a restaurant you don't want to support. We went right to you all. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. But I'm not kidding you. You are so wonderfully consistent with your food. You know you're going to get great service there. The food that we do, you're not going to find a lot of it in St. Louis because it's a lot of regional stuff that we do. So I know this is a little bit of a small plate, but that's okay. We can pile it on. I'm going to no finish such thing this small plate. with a mixture of Fontanella, which is a sharp provolone, Pecorino, which is oh. what we're known for, sheep's cheese. So creamy. The parm. And then what we're going to do is a little bit of fresh ricotta that we make in the restaurant. I'm just going to put that on there. Do you cook like this when you're at home? Uh, not too much. <laughs> Too much. It's gonna be like I'm gonna order a pizza from. And Pino, I'm of just course. gonna throw a little bit of sauce on top of these. Just yeah, like the sauce. And it's probably not the prettiest plate you'll ever see, but I can guarantee. Wait, you. that's a little too far from uh, me. Where are we going with that? <laughs> Let's right. take our bite. I don't know what you're gonna eat. But okay. I'm gonna jump right into there you this. Go. How about it? Okay, let's let's check our work here. I like to get all the flavors here mixed at once. Okay. Mm hmm It's just holy cow. Very simple food done right. You said That's it first. Simple food done right. Peppy, thank you so much You're for taking welcome. time. You're a busy guy. It. I see you no, running around no. the neighborhood. You guys definitely run don't walk to Pino. Give them a call. Hey, set up a party there. We've had many Absolutely. birthday parties there and they do it up just right. Follow them on Facebook, of course, and on Instagram as well. You are gonna get very hungry. Just don't say I didn't warn you when you are on their social media and their website. And of course, while you're online, find In The Kitchen on Facebook. And of course, if you're out and about and you're like, that restaurant might be a good guest, hit us up, drop us a message, like, comment, find all the good stuff going on on STL TV's social media. That's gonna do it. I'm just gonna pull over here and take a bite of this. I wanna all thank right. you for joining yes. us, Peppy. Yes. You heard all the good food news is going down here. Join us on our next episode where we have got the man, Mr. Steve Ewing joining us from Steve's Hot Dogs, right? He is good. unstoppable. Good you friend. won't want to miss it. Good Thanks friend. for tuning in and yep. we'll see you next time.